Hello, and welcome to this lesson in quantitative reasoning. We're in the logic unit, and we're going to look at converting disjunctions and conditionals. Now, conditional statements with the if-then with the single arrow. Disjunctions are or statements with the right side up V connecting them. Turns out you can write one. You can write, if you have a conditional, you can write it as a disjunction and vice versa. And also, we're going to talk about the different forms of conditional statements. So, in, in determining whether two conditional statements are equivalent. So, a disjunction is a statement that has or in it. I just said that. And um, you should be used to that by now. But it turns out the statement P or Q is equivalent to, if not P, then Q. If I make the truth table for P or Q, which I should almost have memorized by now, it comes out the same as the truth table for not, if not P, then Q. So let's, let me show you that. Okay, so I'm going to erase this, give myself some room here. I'm just going to make a little truth table here. So I'm going to make the truth table for if not P, then Q. So I need P and Q, true, true, false. False. I'm going off the screen, aren't I? Let me try that again. All right, let's try this. I'm going to do not the truth table for not P, if not P, then Q. And I'm going to show that it's the same as P or Q. Okay, so I have P, Q. True. I always set up a truth table with, that involves two statements. So I only have two letters here, so it's four rows, two statements. I always set up the inputs in this order. Now let's see. I need a column for not P. And then I'm going to put Q over here because then I can put the answer in the middle and they are in the correct order for the conditional. Sorry, I'm trying to do this quickly. I should slow down a little. False, false, true, true. And then Q, I just am rewriting column Q, true, false. So now I have these in the right order. And I have to remember the left then the right. What does this mean? What are the math facts? And I can look at a truth table, and it might have the title P and Q, and you're going, oh, it's not P and Q, but I have not P. What you're really looking at in that truth table for the if-then is if the left is true and the right is true, the output is true. If the left is true and the right is false, the output is false. Turns out that's the only case of false in a conditional or an if-then statement. False then true is true, and false then false is false. And we talked about in class how, you know, if I make a promise and that if I tell you if you get an A on the final, then you'll get an A in the course. If the only way you can go to my administration and say she lied to me is if this happens, is if you get an A in the final and you don't get an A in the course. If you don't get an A in the final, you have no complaint. If you get an A in the final and you get an A in the course, you have no complaint. This is the only way you would have a complaint to make to my boss. So that's the only, um, sorry, that's the only one that's false. And I had that mistake there. That should be true. The only one that's false. Sorry if that bothered you that I had that there. So this is the left and this is the right side of that if then. So I notice on the lefts, anytime I have a false on the left, my, my answer is automatically true. And let me see if I can do this in a different color. So this will be my answer column. True. True. If true, then true. I made a promise. I kept it. You can't call me a liar. I made a promise. I didn't keep it. Oh, there we go. Now, if I do the truth table for P or Q, you will see it goes true, 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 false. You can even just look at those facts. These are the same. Therefore, these are equivalent. So let's put this in terms of left and right. Left or right is equivalent to not left, if, if not left, then right. So you change the sign. So if the left was already negated, you unnegated. If the left isn't negated, you negate it, as we did in this case. And you change that sign, and you keep the right the same. 
So a couple examples of that um, will, will come up here. So the idea is that you're just going to change. If you want to go between using an or, which is easier to evaluate, or an if-then, you just switch the negation state of the symbol on the left and then change the symbol. So if I were to ask you to say to write an equivalent for right um, not a or b as a conditional you're going to write a because you're going to change the sign if then b if i asked you to write if not c then d as a conditional you're going to write c or d if i ask you to write um if x then y as a as a dis, I think as a disjunction then you're going to write not x or y notice in each case i just changed the first the sign on the first one so here the first one was negated it should be a negation symbol this one is not and you change so you make two changes to change change the negation state of the symbol on the left and change the conditional to a disjunction or the disjunction to a conditional that is how you can write disjunctions in their equivalent conditional form and conditionals in their equivalent disjunctive form. So let's move on. So here's some more practice. I want the equivalent conditional statement of not n or not m. I have to change not n to n and change the sign to the conditional. This is the solution. Notice this changed, this changed, the right side stays the same. It's a pattern. Don't overthink this. It's a pattern. So now this gets a little step back. We're starting with some English language here. Either I don't like pets or I like dogs. So I'm going to say statement P represents I like pets. And this should have, this should be a full sentence. It should be I like pets. Statement should be full sentences. Some of these slides have some little little idiosyncrasies I'm not crazy about. Um, Q should be, I like dogs. But notice, I have a don't like pets here, so that would be a not P. Or I like dogs, that would be a Q. The or is there. So either or is the same as just saying or. Some students get confused with that. So if I want to negate, if I want to turn this into a conditional, I changed the, the negation state of the symbol on the left. I changed the symbol in the middle to a conditional, and I keep the right. So this means if I like pets, now I look back to the definition of these statements, then I like dogs. That actually makes more sense than the first one does to me. But So that is how you would do that. Okay. All right. That is how you convert, starting back at English language and turning into symbols, converting the symbols, and then going back to language. Now, this is a slightly different topic, but it has to do with the conditional. If I say, if it is Tom's truck, then the truck is red. That has a meaning. If I see Tom's truck, if you go, oh, there's Tom in his truck, you know that I'm, and I'm promising you he's in a red truck. If I do, if the truck is red, then it is Tom's. It does not mean the same thing, because that would mean Tom owned every red truck in the world. So that is not equivalent to if P then Q. Switching the order, those second and third rows of the conditional truth table, if true, then false gives you a false, but if false, then true gives you a true. So switching the order matters. When you switch the order, we call it the converse of the conditional statement. You may have seen this in a geometry class. Now, what if I just negate both of them? If it is not, Trump, if it is not Tom's truck, then it is not red. Well, that again means that Tom must own every red truck, so that makes no sense. This is order the same, so this is called the inverse. We just negate both, both sides negated. Okay. And here, the contrapositive, this is the big long word. 
I negate both in switch sides. This actually is equivalent to the conditional. I negate both and I switch the order. So this is equivalent to the conditional. If I do the truth table for if not Q, then not P. So if the truck is not red, then it is not Tom's. That makes sense. If Tom only one, owns one truck and it's red, if it is Tom's truck, then it is red, was my original statement. If the truck is not red, then it is not Tom's. Means the same thing. Only the contrapositive form is equivalent to the conditional. So if I started out with if A, then B, an equivalent statement would be if not B, then not A. Now, if I started out with if not C, then D, an equivalent statement in the contrapositive would be not D, then C. I have to change the negation state of both variables and switch the order. So th this is the conditional, and this is, this is the conditional, then this is its contrapositive. If I did not change both signs, both negation states, or if I did not switch the order, the two statements are not equivalent. You cannot just change the order of an if-then and have an equivalent statement. So these are the, th the forms. So here's an example. If I am hungry, then I eat. If P, then Q. They use P and Q here. The converse would be if I eat, then I am hungry. It's not equivalent. If I make the truth table for if Q, then P, rows 2 and 3 would be switched from if P, then Q. The inverse would be if I am not hungry, then I do not eat. It might make, that might make sense, but it's still not equivalent. If I did the whole truth table, you would find at least one, you would actually find two rows that are different. The second and third rows would be different. The contrapositive statement, if you wrote out the truth table for this, if I don't, don't eat, then I am not hungry, this is the one that is equivalent to the if then. I, my original statement again was if P then Q, I switched sides, and I negated the, each, the two sides. They neither were negated, so now they are both negated in the contrapositive. Only the contrapositive is equivalent. So, given the statement, if not x, then y, what is its equivalent? You have to switch the order. So you're going to do a y on this side and an x on that side. And you have to switch the negation state. So originally y was not negated, so it becomes negated. Originally x was negated, so it's not negated. And there's your answer there. That's the process for doing that. Now, find the contrapositive in English. It's sometimes easier, and the whole point of this chapter, sometimes symbols are clearer to work with. If I, if I, if I do not like cheese, so this should again be a full sentence, I do not like cheese, I eat pizza. Um, if I do not like cheese, so that would be not P, then I do not eat pizza, then not Q. This is the form. It's much easier to write the form down than switch the form and then read it in English. Don't try doing these without writing down the form. So I have an if not P, then not Q. Write down your statements. Even if you just jot them down like this, even though it's not technically statements because they're not full sentences, when you're doing your work and your homework, this is adequate. So then you switch the order and switch the negation state. They're both negated, so now they're not. So when I read this statement here, the contrapositive, if I eat pizza, then I like cheese. You don't always write the then in English, but you can write the then. Um, so that is how to find an equivalent statement in English. I like to turn them to symbols first. I'm got enough practice at it that I could probably do it without doing that, but you should write out the two statements involved. In, in their positive form, then because it gets difficult, I do not not like pizza. You don't want to be double negating things. Uh, and then write it in the new contrapositive form. So that is converting conditionals to disjunctions and the forms and the, the equivalent forms of conditional statements. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you in class.